Help me understand why we allow over 16,000 children to die each day from hunger or hunger-related diseases. Help me understand why it is acceptable for the 0.1% to control majority of global resources while 6 million children die of starvation every year. Help me understand why we should grow up to empower corrupt banks corrupt corporations and corrupt governments instead of empowering humanity. Please explain to me why we should value power and profit instead of people. Help me understand why one billion people are living on less than a dollar a day. And of that one billion, 162 million people are living on less than 50 cents a day. It is unreasonable to believe that poverty occurs naturally. It is unreasonable to believe that people wake up and say, today I want to work hard at not being able to eat. To quote Nelson Mandela, poverty is not an accident. Like slavery and apartheid, it is man-made and can be removed by the actions of human beings. <laughs> So if poverty is not an accident, then what is causing this pandemic we call poverty? It is the point of this speech to argue that a corrupt and violent group of people through the use of governments, banks, and corporations are causing the poverty we are seeing in our world. Allow me to explain how globalized banking is causing poverty, why this should matter to us, and how we can change it. What most of us understand is that ex extreme poverty occurs when people are not able to procure their basic needs, such as water, food, sanitation, clothing, healthcare, and education. What most of us do not understand is that the reason this type of extreme poverty exists on a global scale is due to the corruption of in individuals in our banks, governments, and corporations. <laughs> How do banks fit into the corruption? They are the credit creators. Nations access this credit, which creates the debt money that, the debt money that will be owed back to the bank. Attached to this debt money is compounded interest. This interest can never be repaid because the only ones allowed to create money is the banks. As a result, an exponentially growing national debt is created in every nation that borrows from these banks. How do governments fit into the corruption? They are the policymakers and the tax collectors. The corrupt politicians create policies that benefit the corrupt banks and corporations. These same politicians create taxation policies that lead to wealth redistribution from the poor to the wealthy bankers. Because the tax laws benefit the corrupt banks and corporations, the people who can least afford to be taxed carry majority of the burden. So how do corporations fit into the banking scam? Organizations like the World Bank, the IMF, and the WTO convince countries who are resource wealthy to participate in their centralized banking scam. Government leaders who will not support the banks are forced out and new leaders are put in. These leaders are paid to participate to the detriment of their country. These countries are then destroyed through the looting of the resources, the enslavement of the people, and the denial of benefiting from the profits derived from their own country's resources. Why should this matter to us? It matters because if you and I were in a state of extreme poverty, we would want someone to save us from those imposing their corrupted will upon us. It matters because if we turn our eyes from the injustice, then we will have no excuse when injustice is thrust upon us. It matters because if we don't stop the corruption, my generation will most probably be slaves to the corrupt. How can we change our present course? One option is that every nation creates its own bank owned by the people and quickly phase out the banks that are subject to the policies of the BIS. 
Second, close down the entire global centralized banking scam. Then make these corrupt criminals associated with these organizations accountable for what they have done. Third, each nation begins to create its own money supply to help create schools, hospitals, farms, and any other infrastructure needs. Any and all profit will go to the people and not private global corporations. In conclusion, we could begin to remedy the issue of poverty as well as other key issues such as the environment, energy, health, and education simply by stopping these corrupt individuals and groups. Albert Einstein once said, the world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So let us change our thinking on governments, banks, and corporations so we can eradicate extreme poverty. Thank you.